Hey, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, we're going to unbox Flashpoint South China Sea, the first in a new series, the Flashpoint series from Harold Buchanan, uh, graphic design by Terry Leeds. Uh, this is a recent release from GMT Games. It is a solo game. The solo suitability is high, uh, nine out of nine. Complexity is low. It is for one to two players, but it does include a full solitaire system. So you can you could true solo this playing against yourself, or you could true solo it playing against the bot. Those are uh, great options. It's got uh, it's branded under the GMT One logo, which is their dedication to solo playable games. Uh, so let's crack it open, see what you get inside. Hey, if you're enjoying these videos, be sure to give us a like and a share. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell. One ringy dingy. All right, so one nice surprise that I noted on the back cover here is that the, uh, the rules editing was by Kay Jensen, who is the wife of the late Chad Jensen, who, of course, uh, Chad and Kay were responsible for the best rule book in the history of board gaming, Combat Commander Europe. Um, and so these rules are going to be perfect, I'm sure. Ah, they glow. Just kidding. All right, so you start out with the rule book. Oh, it's actually very small. That's awesome. Uh, GMT uh, matte finish. Good quality uh, uh, paper. As always, it is a 12 page rule book. Very, 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 wow, very large print. Very large print, a lot of white space. Very easy to read. Um, list what the components are. We got to start off with the terms and concepts, how to set up the game. Flashpoint South China Sea simulates actions taken by the United States and China to affect economic and diplomatic factors, island reclamation, freedom of navigation operations, and political warfare in the disputed region of the South, region of the South China Sea after 2000. The Chinese side works to influence the claimant countries in their favor and establish Chinese territorial claims. The United States side works to maintain influence in the region while keeping China in check. The game stops short of a potential military conflict, but the exercise of diplomatic and economic resources is critical to both sides in extending their influence in a conflict just short of war. This set of rules is used only when there are two players. If you are playing the game solo, put this booklet back in the box. You won't be using it. Instead, use the solo rules of play. Yes. 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 That's awesome. I hate when you have a solo system that you have to go like read the two-player rules and say, oh, by the way, first solo, you know, go over here and make these changes. So you're constantly flipping back and forth. This is great. Uh, they did this with Space Core and it worked really well. So awesome, awesome. Well done, GMT. But we will look at this because some of you may be playing this two-player. So we will go in like this, this way as well. So we have a game setup guide, gameplay. Again, very, 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 very not dense which is great for people like me who are dense. Um, we got some Spotify playlists. That's an interesting um, addition to a game is you can scan this QR code and listen to music while you're playing. If you want tension medium, tension low, tension high, you got a Discord server where you can discuss the game. It's very interesting. I like that they're using a uh, site for discussion other than Board Game Gulag. That is very good, very good positive step in freeing gamers from the, uh, well. Get off that soapbox. Anyway, um, cool. So this is the, this is the multiplayer, two player, I okay, guess two player is multiplayer. Then we have the playbook. Is the dedication. I'll dedicate this to gamers and returning to face to face gaming. Get out there and play a game, then give your opponent a big hug. That's right. It's over. It is over. It is over. So, this contains uh, designer's notes, um, so on and so forth, developer and solo design notes, um, information about the different cards in the game. I like that they have a graphic depiction of the card itself along with the description instead of just the number. That's kind of nice. Um, 
cool. Strategy tips, don't wanna know about that. So I'll find out myself. And then a timeline. Nice, all right, very cool. Event card distribution chart, you should look at that. Now we have the most important book, the Solo Rules Play. Now it is a 20 page book. Yep. And this, the Solo Rules were created by Jason Carr of the GMT1 initiative. That's great. And it tells you what the components are for the game because you're gonna start here. If you're playing solo, you just start here. So same general thing, we've got the terms and concepts. How to set up the game for solo. Oh, I'm gonna repeat, thumbs up, way to go. Very nice, well done, well done. How to play, tension track, scoring cards. Again, very, very, not large print, but larger print than, than most GMT games, and a lot of graphics here, a lot of graphic examples. How to run the solo opponent. So on and so forth. Now, one flaw that I will say is on the one hand, they do tell you if you're going to play solo, do not look at this one, and that's fine. And as you can see here, they have the components listed and they say, here's just the stuff for solo that's not used. And that's great because when you're checking off as a, as a two player, you would not want to use those. And they give you the component guide here. But one that's kind of annoying is, I guess they had extra space here to give you the, uh, the Spotify list. If you want to listen to the music, but they did not include that in the solo rules of play. So unless you're playing both, if you, if you listen to them and you read this and you stop on page one and go to this, Go back to this if you want to add the music, is all I'm saying, because they, they did not include that here. So you'd be missing a potential little treat there because it's not in the rule book. And they actually had a space here. They could have kind of put it. You had all this here, they put it on the back. So anyway, all right. So now we got the solo play. We've got a solo play US opponent card. So if you want to play against the US, China opponent if you want to play against China. Reference sheet. Operations costs. There's one for each player, so I assume this might be used for solo as well. Uh, I'm sure the rules will tell you if you need these or not. Both of these are on the uh, good old coded card stock from GMT Games. This is a very nice, uh, I like the design, the, the graphic design on this. They've, it's, 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 it's a little different for GMT. It's kind of nice. It's kind of bold and uh, large print, larger print. And then we have our board, which we'll open up in a minute. And we have some cubes, a couple of black discs, and then some red red cubes, blue cubes. I'm going to go on a limb and say the red are China and the blue is the US. But I could be wrong. China could be blue because they're a little sad. Red could be the US because red, white, and blue. Who knows? And then we've got a deck of cards. We saw in the card discussion. So let's take a look at those first. All right, so we've got the cards. We have our solo cards right here. Solo AI deck. Take a look at those first. We have, no, this is going to have any meaning, but resolve, operations, and influence, various areas on the board, which we'll see the board in a minute. So that's the solo deck. And then we have the scoring cards. Score Brunei, compare all cubes in Brunei, the side with the positive differential scores it has VPs not exceeding one. So kind of like kind of like a Twilight Struggle, but the scorecards come up in here. These will obviously be separate because they have a separate back, but I'm assuming you're gonna just draw one and say, this is what we're scoring now. You know, it's kind of random. And then we have our event cards, which were detailed in the playbook. Take a look at a few. Three through yeah, one and two right there. I guess I sorted them out of order. So you get 48 of these scoring cards. 
point values, description, and what you can do with them, and who they, which regions they apply to. Pretty cool. Good quality, thick. You know, use your standard GMT cards. You might want to sleeve them, but they're pretty thick as it is. All right. Very cool. All right, so here's a quick look at the board. I've got it turned sideways, obviously, for the uh, HD layout, but uh, you can still see it's a very small board. It's only four panels, so it's uh, uh, 17 by 22 in size, but you basically have your various sections, your very regis various regions that are going to be contested, and um, location for the People's Republic of China and the United States of America um, markers, encounters, you get your score chart, victory point track going back and forth 15 to 15. If either side gets to 15, it's an instant victory. Um, uh, it's really just a zoom in. You know, the game board is overlaid onto a map. You don't really play on the map because, again, this is not a conflict uh, simulation as much as the political uh, uh, negotiations um, trying to avoid. A, uh, right before a, uh, a conflict would break out. So anyway, uh, that is a look at the full board and we will now recap everything you get in the box. So if you pick up a copy of Flashpoint South China Sea from GMT Games, you're gonna get uh, that board we just looked at. You're gonna get the scoring cards, the solo cards, the event cards. You're gonna get a bag of wooden bits few wooden bits. You're going to get that board we looked at. Two player reference charts. One solo reference card. A solo rules of play. A two player rules of play. And the playbook. All in a beautiful, beautiful box. And that is everything in Flashpoint South China Sea from GMT Games and GMT One, designed by Harold Buchanan. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye bye. Oh.